What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be checking out a new media player from Zidu. This is the Z9X. So this media player will play back 4K content, HDR10+, Dolby Vision, it has HDMI, supports DTS, Dolby, and it'll play 3D movies. Let's see what's inside the box. All right, so inside we get the product manual, little tip sheet on how to use an HDMI cable. Underneath the player itself, we have the power. We have a SATA connector for hooking up an external HDD to it. We get an HDMI cable and we have the remote control. It looks to be backlit. We'll find out once we put some batteries into it. And here is the player itself. I should mention that there were no batteries inside the packaging. So you're gonna have to supply your own batteries. All right, so this is the player. It looks to be, I think this is made out of aluminum. It feels like it's aluminum, not plastic. So pretty nice quality, nice sharp edges. We get the display up front, nothing on the bottom but rubber feet. On the sides here, we get the connector port for the SATA cable, two USB 3.0 ins. Opposite side, two more USB 2 ins. Around back, we have the, we've got inputs for LAN, HDMI out, HDMI in, optical out, AV out, RS-232, power input, and the main power switch. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing set up on the television set and we'll check out some of the features and the picture quality. All right, so while this is booting up, this has the latest Realtek RTD1619 chipset. It supports HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, and Dolby Vision with low latency using the VS10 engine. It also supports 12-bit color depth. Right now, I've got the player hooked up to a Sony A9G for testing. Setup is gonna be pretty straightforward. You've gotta pick your time zone setting and get it connected to your network. For output mode, we're gonna go with the expert option. Let's keep it on 3840 by 2160. For HDR mode, we have a few options here. Mapping HDR10 will map all content. SDR and HDR will be converted to HDR10 unless it's HDR10+. That will remain HDR10+. SDR Rec 709 Limited will use Realtek's conversion and send everything SDR or HDR as SDR. SDR Rec 2020 does the same thing, except it'll send everything as 2020. Dolby Vision VS10 Engine processes SDR or HDR to the max capabilities of your display. If your display only handles HDR10, it'll process everything to HDR10 using the VS10 Engine. If your display has Dolby Vision, it'll output everything as Dolby Vision inside BT 2020. If you have an HDR10 Plus display, it'll output HDR10 because the VS10 Engine doesn't process HDR10 Plus. Auto sends everything to the display at the native dynamic range. So SDR is SDR and HDR10 is HDR10 and so on. If you have this set to auto, then you'll be using the Realtek processing and not Dolby's VS10 processing. Now this section here will let you match resolution and frame rate, or you can just keep it off. If you want Atmos or DTS-X, you're gonna wanna keep this on raw. It's basically bitstream. And here you can assign custom button presets. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the settings. This is the same frame rate switch again. We've got bookmarks and default language settings, 3D to 2D conversion options. Yes, this does support 3D. This is the function key setting again, and there's some play mode options. The Zidu also handles four subtitles. You can set your Blu-ray region here, and here is the audio offset. Under display, you have resolution options, or you can keep it on auto. Color settings is where all the color space selections are located for both 4K and HD content. If you want, you can scale the image down, otherwise I'd just keep it at 100%. Under picture parameter, you have some sliders if you want to alter the image. 
Now for Max CLL and Max Fall, you may want to keep this on if your display has its own dynamic tone mapping. This lets the player send the correct info to your display so the display can handle the tone mapping. Under Audio, we have a few settings. Just remember if you want Atmos or DTSX, you have to set it on RAW. And here we have some basic settings. Here's HDMI CEC control settings. You can specify when your hard drives go to sleep in this section, and here's some front panel controls for brightness or if you want to display the time or playback info on the front of the player. As far as updates, as of right now, you can't do it via online. You will have to go straight to Zidu and download it to a USB. Now for apps, at the time of this video, there is no Google Play Store or any store to download any apps, so you will have to sideload them. There's also no Netflix out of the box. Next, we're going to add some movies to the library. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is go to Sources and click Scan. It'll either go by really quick or really slow depending on how much content you have. Once the scan is done, you should see the movie covers populate the home screen. It'll be separated into categories and a recommended list. Going into the main movie section, if you click here in the upper right corner, you can change the cover view. Tapping a movie will give you all the movie's details. You can favorite it, watch the trailer, go into the Blu-rays menus, or go straight into the movie. By hitting the menu button, you do have some subtitle options. Here's the audio selection, chapter and titles, 3D to 2D conversion if you don't have a 3D display, aspect ratio settings, repeat mode, and here's the advanced section with some of the stuff that we've already seen before. Now under video information, this will give you all the technical details like resolution, color space, max CLL, and max fall. So there's a bunch of detail here. Now if you want to go into the Blu-rays menus, I'd say it starts up just as quickly as a normal Blu-ray player. Navigating it seemed to be fairly quick, and I didn't notice any real issues with the stuff that I tried out. Keep in mind, this is a 4K ISO. One thing that I wanted to try out was for subtitles, because on the Zipedi player, it doesn't work with full Blu-ray backups. But as you can see here, it does indeed work properly with the Zidu. But the only thing you can't do is move the four subtitles around the screen. Another thing you should be aware of, the Zidu doesn't support Dolby Vision with 4K Blu-ray backups. It supports Dolby Vision Profile 5 and 8, but not Profile 7, which is used on 4K Blu-rays. If you have the player set on auto, it'll output your 4K Dolby Vision discs as HDR10. It also doesn't work with .ts or .m2ts files. However, it will play back Dolby Vision in MKV and MP4 file formats. The only video app that comes with it out of the box is the YouTube app. 4K support does work, but HDR does not. Again, there is no Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Vudu, or any other video app, so you will have to sideload an APK. In a side-by-side -side comparison with the Panasonic UB9000 4K Blu-ray player, I think it's easy to see that the blacks are lighter in comparison to the Panasonic. The whole image appears to be lighter overall. The Panasonic just has more contrast. I am using a JVC NX7 for this particular demo, so it may look different for your display. Now for the 3D guys out there, it does work with 3D backups. This is the Gravity 3D ISO, and it worked perfectly fine. Next thing I took a look at was 1080p content. If you take a look at the color surrounding the Lionsgate logo, you should see a considerable amount of banding. This is what the player set on auto, so the Realtek chip is doing the processing. If we set this to VS10, you can now see that the banding is a lot smoother and the image appears cleaner overall. Only drawback is that if you set the player to any of the VS10 settings, the player is going to output everything at either HDR10 or Dolby Vision if your display supports Dolby Vision. If you're a video purist, then you're likely going to want to keep this on auto. That way SDR stays SDR and HDR stays HDR. But it's totally your choice in which way you want to go. 
Audio-wise, just as long as you have the output set to RAW, which is Bitstream, then all the immersive formats will work without any issues. This is for Dolby Atmos and DTSX. At the time of this video, the Zidu Z9X is selling for $230 on Amazon. This looks to be one of the better media players out there and does one thing the competition doesn't do, and that's Dolby Vision. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with full 4K Blu-ray backups, which for me at least is kind of a big deal. But for everyone else that's using MP4s or MKVs, Dolby Vision is working. Another little annoying thing that I've noticed on this player and other players as well is that the subtitles are on by default when you start a movie. So when a movie starts up, you'll have to go in and turn it off. Now, if you're a video enthusiast or you're really picky about your image, then this player may not be the one for you right now. During my time using the Z9X, Zidu has been updating the firmware to get things worked out. As of this video, the version that I'm on is 6.1.05. All issues aside, this is the snappiest media player I've used yet. Scrolling through all the movies was super quick, and bouncing in and out of playback was just as fast. 4K detail was spot on, and the VS10 processing worked great for SDR material. I think if you're looking for an affordable 4K media player that can handle Dolby Vision and is very quick, then the Zidu Z9X might be something you'd want to consider. So those are my thoughts on the Z9X. Do you guys have a media player, and if so, which one are you using? Leave a comment and let us know. Now if you want to grab the Zidu, I'll leave some links for it down below in the video's description. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, be sure to give it a like. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to tap the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.